It's Mike and Honor, 18 September 2010, for Intro to URT, Observer Covered Training. Combat 1, fly runway heading, traffic down and star, arriving to fighting out the directional runway 30 center, runway 1, 2, right to right hotel, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway heading, 1, 2, right to hotel, combat 1. Clear right, takeoff checks are complete, we're clear to go on a runway heading. All ready to go flying? You bet. All righty. Understand, obviously, this is a high-performance aerobatic airplane. Now, as I tell the guys, they must understand that even though this airplane has lighter controls and quicker roll rate, things like that, um, it is still a fixed-wing airplane. And we are teaching a strategy, a, uh, a technique, all right? We are not, in fact, I'm trying to get them to understand. that one, let's bring on the three to the That's right now, appreciate it. Come on. I'm trying to get them to understand, I'm not trying to actually teach them to recover the extra. Although they will learn to recover the extra by the nature of the training. Right. But they must continually be um, thinking about how this applies to their airplane when we're going through these scenarios. And what they would be doing on their controls. All right. And so I want to and just encourage you to think about that now, even though as you start to fly the airplane, it's going to feel like an F-16, all right? But we're going to learn some concepts and strategies that are applicable to all fixed-wing airplanes, but uh, they must understand that they will adapt to recovering this airplane very quickly. I mean, they will learn to fly it. It only takes a, few, a matter of minutes. And pilots feel good about flying this airplane uh, and all that. So, all right, you ready to fly it? You ready? Okay, you have control. I have the aircraft. Nice and nimble. Yeah, I don't know. But just keep the climb at about uh, 110 to 120 is good. Okay. We're going to get some more altitude up in some cool air. Now you can see you have to hold just a little bit of right rudder pressure in order to keep the ball in the center because of P factor and slip strength. Now, this would be a point that I would kind of emphasize with a prop guy, you know, a guy that's flying a prop airplane. Uh -huh. um, because a lot of guys, even flying C-12s, things like that, uh, a lot of times they get lazy with their rudder usage, uh -huh. managing yaw. And they don't realize that, you know what, I can generate, you can generate a lot of yaw with P-factor and torque uh, in slipstream, especially in a stall. And as I remind them, if you're in a stall and you have P-factor and slipstream, you have the two ingredients you need to go into a spin. Continuous stall and continuous yaw. Those are the two aerodynamic factors required to go into a spin. And I remind them, P-factor and slipstream can generate enough yaw to put an airplane in a spin if you have stall. Um, and so, this is a good time to remind them. Now, if they're a jet guy, such as yourself, I'm not going to emphasize really good coordinated turns. You know what I mean? That's because really they shouldn't be doing anything with the rudders. You know, they need to be leaving the rudders alone. In essence, does that make sense? Yep. So we have to tailor the training a little bit, obviously, to the individual pilot based on their experience and their aircraft type. We'll just keep it climbing here for a minute. If you like, why don't you do a couple of 30-degree angle of bank turns, just kind of left and right while we're climbing, just to kind of get a feel, again, for the airplane. This is one of the first things we do when we get out to the area, is we do just basic maneuvering. 30, 45, 60 degree angle of bank, level turns. Uh, we do some slow flight. We get used to flying the airplane, that kind of thing. So right now, the first flight is designed to really just introduce the pilot to the extra. 
and to introduce them to certain flight envelope ex uh, exercises and exposure they've never seen. Okay. The first flight has to be very low pressure, low key, and uh, feels reasonably good with flying the airplane. Uh, we then go into uh, doing introducing that unaccelerated stall, the power off and power on okay. stall. And this is where we introduce the all attitude recovery checklist. Push, power, rudder, roll, climb. All right? Okay. So let me go ahead and demonstrate one to you now. Okay. And we're going to simulate now that we're holding altitude. We're in a little bit of a turn. And I'm holding altitude, so I'm continually feeding back pressure. Angle of attack is building. And when it stalls, I'll do the recovery. All right, so there's the stall buffeting. So push, power, rudder, roll, and climb. Now I'm setting my VY attitude right here, checking for stable airspeed, not decelerating, uh, full power, and a positive rate on the altimeter. And once the pilot sees that, stable airspeed and a positive rate, what I want them to say to me is positive rate or positive climb. Okay. All right? So, as I remind the guys, what I want them to say only, this is all they're going to say during the recovery, is push, power, rudder, roll, climb, positive rate. Okay? That's all they're going to say for, for the rest of the program until we get the spins. So, um, would you like to try one? Sure. Okay. So you have control. Highly okay. Let's go ahead and pull the power to idle now. Now just hold us in our angle of bank and just hold your altitude. Well, obviously angle of attack is building. We'll be coming up on our 1G stall speed around 65 knots. There it is. Push. Power. Rudder. Yeah, I should roll. Rudder. Roll. Climb. And now climb. Eyes of the rate. Not yet. Not quite yet. The reversal there. There's your positive there. It's all right. All right. Good. Now use control. All right. Now we got high control. Yeah, the aircraft. Um, all right. Good. And I would have told you that was a very good first time. Very good first time. We were in Angle Bank. You did a nice job of unloading the airplane without trying to roll upright right away. All right. And, and that was really good. Now, I can tell you most pilots would have tried to roll level as soon as they did their push. Does that make sense? Yep. That's that common error that pilots make. They introduce ailerons too early, too early in the recovery. And also that they weren't trying to roll up right with the rudder like this. And you can see we created a lot of yaw there, didn't we? Yep. And as you know, you have to create yaw if you're going to roll the airplane with the rudder. And, uh, and, and certainly, we probably don't want to do that in, in a stall. Okay. Um, all right, so once they've practiced that several times now, uh, and they get used to the discipline of being very methodical and very mechanical, we go on to the uh, power on stall. Okay, so let me just simulating like a departure profile. Here we are climbing out. we got power on the airplane. Maybe we've got the nose too high. Airspeed's bleeding. And uh, pretty soon the airplane will stall. Once again, I'll do the recovery here. You can follow along with me lightly on the controls if you like. So there it is. So push, power, rudder, roll, climb. And there's a positive rate. Okay. Recovery's complete. So once again, very methodical there on the recovery. Now, uh, from there, we go on now to a flight envelope exposure exercise, which is the falling leaf. Now, this is a very dynamic flight condition, as you probably remember, uh, depending on which airplane you've been in to do it. Uh, and this is the first time what we're going to do is expose the pilot to several things. First of all, we're going to log some time installed flight. Because most pilots have never really logged time in stall flight for any substantial period of time, and they don't know really what can go on and what it begins to develop into. And, they, and they've never really thought about the vast instability and controllability problems that you have beyond critical angle of attack. So they're going to see this. Another thing we're going to experience is stall flight while going downhill, nose down, face full of cactus, with airspeed increasing. They've never seen that before either. Okay. But then they're also going to be how quickly we solve it, which is by decreasing angle of attack with the elevator. Simply unloading, and immediately the airplane will snap right out of the stall, and the airplane will become controllable and stable again. All right?
Okay? So, what I want you to do here, and I'm going to kind of treat you like a client here on this, okay? All right? I want you to try to keep the wings level, all right? I'm going to hold it in the stall, all right? Now, you go ahead and keep your right hand on the stick, okay? Lightly. I will hold this in the stall, all right? But okay. I want you to do everything you can with the rudders and try to keep the wings level, okay? All right? Can, we have, can I use the stick or not? No, nope, can't use the stick. All right. All right. I want you to do everything you can with the rudders to try to keep the wings level, all right? Uh, and you're going to see, you'll be lousy at it, all right? Now, this is going to be very dynamic. We're going to be rocking and rolling a lot on this, okay? You all set? Yep. Okay. So, you have control of the rudders there. Okay. We're coming up on the stall. And go. I'm already out of phase. Is that feel unstable to you? I'm already out of phase with it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. I have control. You got it. I have control. I'm control. Better better. All right, good. Now, I want you to do something. Now, what's right ahead? Look at this. The face forward there. Now, look at the air. It's freezing. Uh, 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 that's right. What do I need to do to fix this? Push. Push. Power. Rudder. Roll. 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 Probably show your power again already. Yep, it's been an idle the whole time. All right. All right. Now, you just saw once again something that most pilots have never seen. I cannot tell you 90% of the pilots, we just came out of that maneuver and they're going, wow, that was amazing. They've never seen that before. And I remind them, this is what the DC-8 guys were looking at. The Airborne Express guys, right? When they were looking at a face full of trees with wings that wouldn't seem to hold level, they couldn't seem to control the airplane. They were screaming downhill, and it was counterintuitive to actually have to push forward on the yoke. And did you notice, as you expected, as soon as we unloaded the airplane, the airplane immediately came out of the stall, didn't it? Yep. And it had nothing to do with power increase, and it had nothing to do with air, uh, airspeed increase. In fact, airspeed was increasing the entire time, wasn't it? That's true. And so this is a foreign aerodynamic concept to most pilots. Uh, and this is one of the most, this is one of the highlights uh, of the Bruce flight right here. One of the one of the predominant things they remember about this flight is the falling lead. And being also how quickly you can recover simply with elevator. And it had nothing to do with anything else.